Wow. Oh, right. Hi, everybody. On. Hello. <laughs> um, so I assume you know who all of these people are, but just in case, this is Dan and Annie and Catherine and Eugene. <laughs> and Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so I think one of the questions, one of the questions that I had as a Schitt's Creek viewer going into the last season is what a happy ending looks like for these people. They have been uh, you know, growing in this place. They are not the same people they were when they first got there. And I was really trying to think through, like, is it going to be happier for me and for them if they stay or if they go? And I know you're not going to spoil this for us. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I will. For the last episode. <laughs> um, There's an unfortunate car accident. <laughs> oh, no. So they go, in a way. What yeah. a twist, as, as do we all, as do we all. Oh, no. But I wonder if you could talk through, like, that. so this is the, the debate that I'm imagining about the end. Was that the debate that you were having about the end, or are there other conversations that you were having about what it is gonna be like to sort of shepherd this show to the end? Well, <laughs> yes, I mean, yes. But I would, I mean, we, we always, <laughs> how do I put this? <laughs> We have always approached the show from a slightly more emotional standpoint. So the, the sort of surface idea of will they stay or will they go was sort of the last thing we thought about. And what we really sat down with when we started to brainstorm the trajectory of this last season was what do these characters need? What will make them happy? What will make the audience happy? What will... Uh, ultimately be satisfying for both the audience's expectations and our characters. And that was a really tricky conversation because sometimes you know the audience wants one thing, but the character might need something completely different. Mm. And the one thing that I loved when I was researching series finales of other shows that I really responded to was the fact that all of the ones that I loved presented me with something that I didn't expect, mm. but that I was pleasantly surprised by. So I think for me it was about honoring the characters, trying to honor the audience expectation, while at the same time offering something fresh and unexpected that will take people by pleasant surprise, hmm. if that makes any sense. I, no, I think, that, I think that's good. And then obviously came the like, what happens from a story perspective, but it really was rooted in something far deeper and, and more emotional. Off the sure. Top. You guys have been living with these characters for a long time. I'm sure you have thought through what would make the most sense for your, like what, what kind of the debate would feel like for each of your characters? I'm curious, do you think Alexis um, could be happy living there forever? <sighs> Watch yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think, well, I think Alexis is the one of the family to kind of make the best of any shitty, <laughs> I didn't mean. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Um, it's whatever the name of the show. kind of miserable <laughs> scenario she's put into, she can find a silver lining. Yeah. Um, do I think it would be the best for her? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> okay. It's a very stressful situation. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That's on. That's on me. Let me. Let me back up. I just love that anyone cares. <laughs> but it really, it's pretty amazing. It, it is. is. Thank is, you for caring. I can imagine, I mean, the extent to which people care about this show is, in some senses, not surprising <laughs> because it is such an amazing show and because there's so much in it for people to respond to. But there is so much TV on right now. It is so easy to get lost in the flood. I wonder what it has felt like to watch the response grow for the last several years. Well, um, it's been pretty nice. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we did. We started out doing this show in Canada, mm. and uh, we got uh, an American uh, broadcaster, Pop, who picked up the show, and yet, you know, at, at that time, it was a kind of a, a young network trying sure. to get its feet off the ground, and it was, and we did feel like uh, we were, in a kind of a 
cultish kind of you know situation. Yeah, Back but not in a bad started. way. Cultish in a warm, no, happy like the way. The best kind yeah. of cult. Yeah, the fun one. The best moments of your Small, time in a cult. Happy. No, I actually. Yeah, yeah, sure. Where they actually serve Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually meant in a bad way, but. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, we'll go your route. That's I decide. <laughs> uh, and uh, and over and then the audience just seemed to take our fans just seemed to take to the show. Social media, at least when we started in uh, Canada, was was pretty strong, kind of you know right right out of the gate. So mm. that kind of moved us along. And then the you know the show we just focused on the work. Mm. And from season to season, the show's just kind of elevated the elevated itself, and and now you know it's people you know yeah. are watching and 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 it's critics are writing about it. And, <laughs> it's uh, a tricky thing um, from a writing standpoint in terms of the growing sort of fan base. Yeah, and it's interesting because often I've been asked like, have you considered your fans? in the process of writing the show? And the answer is no. <laughs> and that's not a disrespectful no. Yeah. But I think when you're creating something, it's always important to realize why people are watching. And it's interesting, because I've watched TV shows where I've become aware, oh, the people making this show are now playing to me as an audience member. Mm -hmm. And it's becoming aware of itself, which in a way distances me from what I was watching because in a, in the, the authenticity of the show is gone. Mm. So when we sat down with our amazing team of writers, the mandate was always forget about the fact that people are watching this. Let's sit down and explore in the same way that we had with our first season when no one was watching. Mm. And when it came to a last season of a show, that I think was the only time where we opened the door a, a crack mm -hmm. when it came to, at this point, we have to give the audience something a little bit more than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean, you know, Easter eggs and unanswered questions. And, you know, there's a reason why we opened the first <clears throat> episode of the show by revealing the creek. That those kind of details from a writing standpoint was our team of people saying like, now we're going to give you some fun little yeah. pieces. It's also because he hates to get his hair wet, right? That was the other reason you <laughs> yes. put the creek in? Yeah, well, body exactly. Wet. I thought yeah. it was a Krieg, and I was just wondering what a Krieg was for the last 30 seconds, but I'm with you now. The Krieg. I'm back. <laughs> that was the original title for the show, <laughs> Shit's Krieg, and then nobody <laughs> knew what that <laughs> meant. <laughs> um, <laughs> But we were very lucky because we actually broke the last season of our show before, I think, culturally speaking, people started paying attention. So I, I love the fact that we have had a very pure experience with this show that, that was not sort of dealing with expectations of press or fans. Mm. It was, it's always been quite pure, and I, I love that. Yeah. But the intent from the beginning was always to make a strong character-driven comedy, emphasis on character, and uh, to do that to do that well, uh, you had to focus and create characters that were credible and real, and then you needed a cast who could take that and then drive it home and create characters that people actually care about, and that makes it very, um, so much easier to kind of, you know, weave your storylines in and around the characters when you know the audience is with you. Sure. Um, you are you have lived with these people for a long time. Your own input, I know, has shaped each of these characters as they um, as they have grown for the past uh, several years. But I'm curious if you ever if you had to play one of the other four characters <laughs> on the show for just a like wacky Wednesday kind of sort of situation, who would you pick? Wacky Wednesday. At work. <laughs> <laughs> I love Wacky Wednesday. Yeah, me too. Just out of the four, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Just out of the four. So not, uh, so I, because I want to play Bob. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same kind of wrist acting, but yeah. like a little, you know. It does translate, um, yeah. I think, I mean, I think I would, I would pick Moira. Honest to God, I was going to say you, oh but gosh, I'm a little so old, cute. but I still would try. <laughs> You're, the life you've lived is so exciting. Yeah. Um, Shut up. I want to have that in my past. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what about you? I would pick, I mean, the clothes alone, Moira. <laughs> ah! That's great. Yeah. Say Moira. And I would say Moira because, <laughs> you know, just to step out of my comfort zone. <laughs> or into it. 
<laughs> yeah, you or his know. squid. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> what do you think would be the hardest thing about trying to play one of the other characters? Would it be the, like, manners? You have such distinctive mannerisms that you've all developed, and yet it also seems almost easy to, I would, I mean, I, this is certainly not denigrating, but like you could almost imagine parodying some of them <laughs> right. in some. There's been some Halloween costumes. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. where you really get to see yourself parodied. Sure. What does that, <laughs> what does that feel like to see I yourself? do that. People just like clearly cutting up black shag carpets and like pasting them on their eyebrows. It's a very <laughs> sobering experience. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I would say, personally, yeah. I feel like trying to replicate that accent as yeah. an actor, I feel like you would almost have to make a totally different choice. Sure. Um, even Texan. though, yeah, like Southern. Exactly. A real draw, yours. yours. Oh, mine? Oh, well, I made a different Who's choice. Accent? Whose accent? I made a different choice in every scene. If you really <laughs> listen, it's not that consistent. <laughs> There are lots of different choices going on. <laughs> <laughs> I had a choice. I had a question about her vocabulary, which is prodigious. You feel the room bombulating. <laughs> 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 and I, I had read that you often punt, uh, you look to, uh, for ways to really throw in some extra oh, yeah. SAT words in there. No. S oh, yes. Of yes. Sorry. <laughs> are those on SATs? No, these are words that nobody else has heard of for a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I wonder. What do you imagine in your head? Like, where? Did, I know where you got these words. Where did Moira get these words? <laughs> Same place. She looks at. <laughs> we are one. She lives. Um, she lives with books of arcane words. Foils Falavery. Oh. Our makeup artist Lucky gave me this book, Foils Falavery, because I had the idea I wanted to do this. So I was going through the thesaurus all the time, as mm. were you and the writers, or you writer and the writers, um, to try to floralize, moirize dialogue from the very beginning, but. Then Lucky gave me this great book, Foils Falavery, and then I found Foils Further Falavery. Oh, Another wow. Another friend gave me Mrs. Burns' Dictionary. Then she gifted and me the books. <laughs> <laughs> and we still couldn't do it. I would say the greatest, uh, like, uh, 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 humbling experience was writing something for Catherine and then having Catherine elevate what we've written <laughs> to a level that was way beyond anything we could do. And we're thinking, like, we're being paid for this. And she just <laughs> threw in a word that I have scoured foils for oh. philavery for, <laughs> can't even say it. That's probably an example of but how that, much I struggled. The best thing in the world is having the creative freedom to do that, thank you. You know, mm. other people go, no, we'll take care of it, thank you. No, mm. but I have these books, and I, <laughs> yeah. and I want to do this. I know how she speaks. No, <laughs> say it so, as is. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what's funny. <laughs> So here's my serious, we're at Google and it's a very serious question. Okay. It's a show about income inequality? Mm. And I'm, I wonder... <laughs> Is it? Who said that? Thank you for noticing. Mm. Go on. Does it feel weird to be, has it felt different to be making this show now than it did when you started? because the world feels like it's shifted in, I don't know if you noticed. What? <laughs> it's good timing. Um, I think I noticed the shift happen more from an emotional standpoint than from a satirical standpoint. I mean, obviously it's a satire, obviously we're commenting on sort of the disillusion of, of money and mm. how sort of that can actually separate people instead of bring them together despite what those people think. Um, but for us, it was the emotional response shifted. The show sort of, the fan reaction went from, oh, this is a funny show. I love the way Moira speaks or I love the way that David and Alexis bicker with each other. And then once that happened, um, politically speaking, the, sh the <laughs> response changed from observational reactions mm. to more of an emotional reaction. Mm. And that's when we started realizing, oh, people need this. Not necessarily our show per se, but people need joy. People need safe places in their days where they can turn on the television and 
feel safe for 21 minutes. Accepted and, and yeah. seen and, yeah. you know, um, and I think you could really tell. You could see a pendulum swish, shift in terms of just seeing it for one thing and then needing it for something completely different. And I think that's both lovely and totally heartbreaking at the same time. Hmm. Who do you think they would vote for? <laughs> We all know. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, work. I work blue. Okay. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Look at the man. Do you think that David would find any of that appealing? <laughs> but there are a lot of options in this moment. Yes. I'm just. I wonder if you, if he would have any inclinations. I don't. To be perfectly We're... honest, know if he would be that informed. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna throw it out there. <laughs> Um, I know who he wouldn't vote for. Sure. Okay. Fair. And like, Alexis went there one time, but like, totally regrets it. <laughs> oh, no. Imagine. That's Works so disturbing. <laughs> oh. And Johnny? Johnny, I Johnny would be a Mayor Pete guy. Really? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. He might have originally been um, Republican, but not now. You think, being a businessman? Uh, I, I, I think man? in his, I think in his time, yes, he uh, dabbled. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Eh? In Republicanism. Um, sure. yeah. This is interesting backstory we haven't explored. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it could come out next season. Oh wait oh. a minute! Oh. Oh. Wow! Oh. Yikes! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And Moira, do you think she would have any, would she be similarly a mayor, did she vote the family ticket or is she? I'm still sad about Hillary. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I think sartorially speaking, they could all put a little more effort. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, up the eyeglass frame game. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Let's hire a tailor. Lose the primary color story yeah. unless it's a hair hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <I just> <laughs> um, so we are gonna. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We're just gonna transition to audience questions. Why now. not? I don't There's know. no way to transition out of that into anything. into really anything. Else. <laughs> so we could just let's we're, 180 it. Yeah, we're gonna go the. Although I could yes. live in this world for a very long time. I mean, I. Yeah, I want a spin-off now. I want you. To, I want more to work on a campaign. Yeah. I want to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, life, life coach. <laughs> it's the definition of it writes itself. Yes. yes. All right. Okay, so uh, we have questions that were submitted ahead of time. So I will read a question. I will uh, uh, select from the many interesting options. Oh, are you going to keep any of the wigs? This is a question from Jay. Who are you asking? Me. <laughs> Uh, are you? No. I took maybe three. I can't carry them off. The sure. Can I can? Yeah. You took a lovely one that looks so great on you with the rainbow. Are you going to keep any of her wigs? You should have a. I have. Yeah. Yeah. I actually. Dan kept quite a, fancies himself in the wigs. I love the wigs. Mm. Um, I kept a wig that was not used this season that uh, I loved that I purchased myself. <laughs> didn't get used, it's fine. I didn't know you wanted this. It's, no, listen, the, uh, here's what I'll say about the process of the wig selection. It is so organic. We basically, I said to, to Anya, who is the hairstylist on the show, just make sure she has eight to 10 wigs at all time to choose from. <laughs> I want it to feel impulsive. I want it to feel like we have a selection. And that's how it really happened. So yeah. I was not going to interfere in that creative process at all. So once and I got to keep the wig that was brand new. Um, <laughs> And it was just an anime, it was like a Sailor Moon wig, <laughs> but it was blue, and it was like a heavy bang with a, two huge like pigtails on the side with like big anime curls. That's um, it's in my closet. <laughs> and who knows what next Halloween will bring, but yeah. I have an idea. Sure, sure. <laughs> Um, are there any other things that you kept from set? I mean, it was, it's a small space. I mean, it's a very emotional place for you. Menu. Aw. Oh, Who's yeah. got a menu? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, I you took a menu. You didn't get a menu? You didn't yeah. get a menu? <gasps> no. 
Yeah. I ransacked the place, though. I got took everything. all the furniture right. in the cafe. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I got literally everything else. Um, I took a I took Alexis's uh, pubic relations diploma. <laughs> and uh, what else? Oh, I have the I have the painting uh, that was behind Johnny and Moira's bed of the boat. Oh, that's nice. So that's nice. nice. Yeah. And Emily has the uh, Emily has the stag. The stag. Oh, right. At the yeah. motel. It's yeah, that was her apartment's the size of a postage stamp. The painting is uh, this big. <laughs> so I don't know where it's going, but I know that it's taking up an entire wall at her apartment. What did you take? I wanted to take the bell that was on the desk in oh, the motel yes. office that didn't work. And uh, when I went in to look for it after we wrapped the last scene in the motel, it wasn't there. Someone Somebody stole took it. the bell. And Why the bell? Though? And it was something Why that my dad for the longest for seasons. It was like three seasons. Everyone on set knew that the bell was going to my dad. Oh no! And we went to get it at the end of once we wrapped yeah. the motel set, and it was gone. gone. And no, and we sent out emails to the staff, being like, really? "If it yeah. happened to fall in your purse, <laughs> we are all gonna turn our backs, and you can put it back on the town." Nobody, it never got returned. We don't know where it went. Wow. But such an odd thing for somebody actually to take so if they're going to actually take something from, well, let's say steal, if sure. they're going to steal something <laughs> That's it. from the set, this little thing that was such a meaningless thing to take. Plus, you put it in your uh, pocket, it starts ringing, which seems like it doesn't, you know. No, it didn't work. Oh, no, sure. it didn't work. Yeah. no, no, yeah. that was the yeah, thing. Was Every the, time yeah, you sure. hit it, yes. it didn't work. That's um, all. And well, I did take a menu as well, which, yeah. which is, it's actually more fun in your own home. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in the from cafe, your wife. Yeah. and uh, yeah, took a family happy. picture that was in the uh, the little that was on the table in yeah. our motel room. Yeah. yeah. Noah and I shopped the store when we wrapped the apothecary. <gasps> oh. Yeah, it was lovely. It was like the whole all the crew went outside because they had to do something else, and then he and I were just in the store by ourselves, and we like got our little rose apothecary totes and like <laughs> filled ransacked our own store. <laughs> So I have like little candles and I have notebooks and all of these things. Mm. So yeah, it was, it was. <clears throat> I have at least one friend who wants to know why she can't buy like a gazillion rose apothecary things. Just <laughs> as a, just I'm putting that out there. Well, there's a merch um, site if you're interested. Yeah. Um. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, what if any other songs were considered for simply the best? Well, the thong song by Cisco. That's mm. one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We couldn't get the thong song cleared, so oh, wow. we had to settle for Tina. Um, nothing. Nothing. That was a song that I have that mean, had meant a lot to me, just personally. Um, I've, I've always admired the lyrics to that song, and whenever it came on, I was always the person in the bar being like, "No, no, no! Just listen to what she's saying." It's like pumping through a nightclub. I'm like a nightclub. Like I go to those. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so when we were writing, I had always had this song in mind, and I thought like the sentiment of it was so great, and I knew that Noah was a singer, and I know that he could have probably done a really good job, which he ended up doing. So I basically put in the request, and then we just crossed our fingers, and fortunately, uh, her team said. Wow, that has to have felt. It felt great. Did you have to write? It felt better when Noah actually came to me with the song, and I was like, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I yeah. want. I have heard of people writing letters to try to get songs cleared. Was that something you had to do, or was it just a? I had a well. Ooh, you almost caught me in something. Ooh. ooh. Oh! <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> no. Oh. I'm not telling. No, okay. you're miked. I'm not I'm even whispering. Not here's, even okay. Worse. Here's a spoiler. <laughs> professional. She's a professional. I almost. Anyway, no, I'm, not, I'm gonna avoid. Um, just yell past. I mean, just yell past. Pass. Uh, no, we've been very lucky in the fact that we have been able to. Anyway, people. Good answer. Good. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Well, I feel simultaneously disappointed and elated by that answer, and I can't. Ooh, you were so close. So close. Anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, this is another question. Um, I so. I had heard that when uh, you get a lot of questions about being a family and when you're you work together as a family, one thing that I had heard was that when either Dan or Sarah are on camera and you are not, you watch the monitors and you mouth their lines along <laughs> like a dance mom is what is, is the end of that sentence. 
I, I, uh, I, I, I'm not aware okay. uh, of that. Yeah. Uh, I, that certainly may have happened in, yeah. in the very beginning when, sure. when I, I was still like, I can't believe my kids are in a scene with Catherine O'Hara. You know, <laughs> that's that's how it that's how, that's it, how was. it started. So yeah, I was glued to the uh, monitor. Gotcha. I'm, I wasn't aware my lips were moving with theirs. <laughs> mm. It was particularly cute. fun when like Noah and I had to kiss a lot, and I remember being like, "Do you does he need to be?" <laughs> um, he would act so that's just not supervising, a, just supervising. But that that <laughs> makes it seem like it's not an early thing. Like that was much later into the much later. Yeah. Oh, no, was, yeah, no. This went on until the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's the only thing I just wanted to yeah. hear. This. What can I say? My dad champions his kids. It's a wonderful yeah. thing. Yes. 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 <laughs> Thank Take you very six, much. Kissing Thank Noah. You. Do we Thank need him for in the monitors? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So. Uh, you are wrapping up the show, and so it's weird to ask you about like what would be happening in the distant future of it. But I am curious. Um, there's a question here. Uh, it's time, like it's 2025, and it's time to reboot this sucker or revive it. Mm -hmm. What story would you want to tell about these characters in the future? If I had that story, I think we'd still be doing the show. Oh, really? OK. <laughs> and if I had that story, I think we'd be doing a sp No, the answer is I don't know. Yeah. I do, I, I mean, people have been asking, which is very flattering. Um, Mostly me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, I, I was, I've come to realize that like, like anything you care a lot about, th things speak to you in almost mm. subliminal ways. And it, the show spoke to me. Mm. And I have such a close relationship to it. This is sounding sort of weird, but I do feel like you, you have to sort of read, you have to read the room, you have to sort of gauge the pulse of what you're doing. And I think there was a, I have such a closeness to the show that it felt like it said something. And then we got our last two seasons ordered, five and six were yeah. ordered together. And that to me felt like a sign that we have 28 episodes to wrap this up, which is exactly sort of, originally I almost thought we were gonna end after five. I'm glad we didn't, but it did feel like someone gifted us like the perfect amount of time to sort of lay the foundation of how this story would end. Mm. So, uh, so what you're saying is you don't want to you don't want to reboot this. Well, we've like just a... spent so much time like getting it to a place where I hope you all enjoy how it ends that yeah. the idea of like exploring what happens next is like I might it's need a minute. So very um, fresh. <laughs> but also, you know, I I want to give it space because I do hope that we can do something in the future. I do hope that something crosses my mind that feels worthwhile to explore in terms of feature length film. That's a lot, but I will say <laughs> I'd say yes. I do think, you know, I I loved our holiday special. I would love to maybe tack something on down the line, but again, it has to Pour mean em. something. Purim. Purim. Yeah. Um <laughs> And it ha I think particularly because our, the fans of our show have been so supportive and know it so intimately and have championed it for so long, we can only do things of quality mm. if we continue this story. So it has to be meaningful, it has to be special, and uh, when that day comes, if that day comes, I, you know, I can't wait. Mm. But, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it, it is. It's hard to think about what if and what what sure. could have, what would. It, the story, the, the 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 you know, the series reaches its natural endpoint, and anything past that, you know, you get into the law of diminishing returns. Mm. It's like, you know, we're yeah. just uh, peaking. You don't want to be one of those shows where they're like, it was good until episode or until season seventeen, and mm. then it started to feel a bit. I think there's something really special about leaving people with a good taste in their mouth. Sure. And that's uh, rare in TV because I think Tell that to my manager. <laughs> <laughs> He's so upset. <laughs> this is a... He can't, he calls me about anything else. Yeah, what is with Daniel? And why does well, he not want to... <laughs> Let it go. Um, you know, <laughs> as is life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm interrupt. Um, this is, I believe, a, a question for Catherine. Uh, as a cooking enthusiast, can you please demonstrate how one folds cheese? <laughs> you just fold it. <laughs> okay. I think we've all learned. We've all learned. <laughs> no, okay. I was folding cheese at Christmas and laughing to myself about the scene. Yes. 
So there's there is a method. A good, well, there's a good uh, chocolate cake recipe I have here. With Where you melt the cheese chocolate. in it? No, it isn't cheese. Oh. It's um, <laughs> egg whites. Uh. You, fold, you fold egg whites a lot mm -hmm. into things. First you whip them and then you fold them in. Yeah. The spatula. Okay. A nice rubber spatula. How would Moira say spatula? Spatula. Oh, she does <laughs> <laughs> Like anyone who cares about the English language obviously, would say. Obviously. Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. Oh. Those letters are there. Those letters are there for a reason. Yeah. You have to respect everyone. They want to be yeah. heard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This question may be a continuity problem that's going to blow this whole thing wide open. Good luck. Oh God. <laughs> who in the beginning? They are, they have no money. I mean, truly, I mean, they're right, they're rock uh -huh. bottom. Who pays their phone bills? Well, Alexis got the phone through Stavros. Uh -huh. For a long time, Stavros was paying her phone bill. Okay. And by the time that we actually got phones, we were able to pay. No. What? Yeah. Did we get, when did I get a phone? You had a phone from the beginning. No, I didn't have a phone from the beginning. <laughs> from, when did I have a phone? It was not first season. My phone came in, I think, second season. Maybe, maybe we had a family plan. Maybe, Stavro, maybe Alexis Stavros. seduced Stavros, Stavros, Stavros into a family, family plan. For the family. Yeah. Bottom line, Stavros paid for the phone. We were rich, but we were yeah. cheap. And we would take advantage of anyone. Exactly. That's, right. mm. That's how we got rich. With but Stavros, family I, plan. The only reason why but I know there was no cell phones was because for the first season, I didn't want to show cell phones on TV other than Alexis' cell phone because mm. I was so bored. Okay. Even though I'm on mine all the time. All the sure. time. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to. I have a lot of business to it's do. Busy yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then he made a chunk of money at the blouse bar and he got a job. Sure. And okay. that made that check really I made at least $17 bagging groceries. Yeah. 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 That's and that'll... $17, no. I was making, I don't even know what. Okay. So we'll say they, they, were, they were blouse barn. Yeah. Let's bones. just say if we're focusing on that, we're focusing on the wrong thing. Okay. <laughs> And by the way, all our other luggage full of wardrobe was up behind the motel sign. Oh. That's true. On the second floor. In case you're wondering. Yeah. Vacuum sealed, sure. wafer thin, obviously. <laughs> that was the thing they did as they were running out of their house. They were vacuum sealing all yeah. of their clothes. 100%. It was the final, yeah. was the final move. Nice. Um, this is, this is a, another interesting a small question. Is, is Moira, what is Moira's maiden name? <laughs> Ooh, did we ever have one in the script? We did never had one in the script. We have one had in one in the room, and I've forgotten. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm going to say Mian. Mm. So my mother's maiden name. Sure. Uh, <laughs> no, no we never had. A I wish name. that I could remember because it was Ramin. funny. Mm. Her last name was not a pleasant sound. Not pleasant sound. No, it was something very sort of um, cacophonous. Ooh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, I love you for that. Thank so you, you. That's what you can keep for the mm -hmm. episode. Exactly. Yeah. That's a reveal down the line. The Moira origin story. It's written down somewhere. Yeah. I have a big <laughs> binder of information. Okay, good. Moira didn't speak like this then, so that would be really <laughs> as interesting as the way I speak. Yeah. <laughs> Naturally. Um, not. Can you... I'll try to say not interesting. Sorry. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Carry on. Can you... <laughs> Can you remember, uh, is there a scene that you can describe that was very hard to shoot without laughing? Well, yeah, for me, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, shooting a scene with uh, Chris Elliott. Oh, yeah. Who always had my number on the show. He's, mm -hmm. he's one of the funny guys in the world. Uh, and it was a scene where I was uh, uh, teaching him uh, how to, he started out teaching me how to, to do a golf swing. We were showing Stevie how to swing a golf club. And then I end up saying, you don't know what you're talking about. So I get, I go in behind Roland and I'm behind him with my arms around his arms. Mm. And, you know, I, 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 I'm saying things like, um, uh, are you uh, using the Vardon grip, uh, Roland? And I can hear him say, uh, yes, I'm using a Levardon. <laughs> and I just started laughing. Yeah. You know, sure. I'd say, Roland, are your hands uh, gently kind of cradling uh, the shaft? And I'd hear, oh, they're on the shaft. Mm. And then 
and I was gone. And I, it was the long, I mean, I, I couldn't really contain myself from take to take. I would just, just start laughing hysterically. I couldn't get it back. I think you guys had, um, you had a thing, you and Daniel had a... Uh, Allez vous. Allez vous. Yeah. Allez vous yeah. Your face. Allez vous. Yeah. Catherine had a moment where she couldn't keep it together, and I have never been more excited in my life. <laughs> I remember thinking in that moment, we are doing something right here, yeah. folks. <laughs> if Catherine broke, we're doing something oh right in the comedy department. You know, I realized every time we had to do some kind of performance together, because the other scenes that really made me laugh were the um, asbestos fest and, <laughs> and the uh, Christmas in the, the past, the when we performed together, and you had that sad hairdo that, you, the, <laughs> that young David thought was cool. Of course, and just seriously. forcing you to perform mm -hmm. in the Allez Vu and then in the songs, just watching. <laughs> well, he really <laughs> got into it. That's the thing. It was me. reluctant, but then he yes. committed more than oh, more than, than I you ever have. should. Mm -hmm. Than a, than a, than that boy should. Yeah, have. the mm -hmm. fold in the cheese scene was was very funny for me. Oh. I, I don't couldn't. think we were laughing when we did it. I heard afterwards that it was funny, but when we were doing it, we were, I we were very serious. serious. Until the some, end, when we, we were got serious to, about it, were we? We were very serious. serious until the end when it was, we were yelling at each other, oh, yeah. and then it okay. started getting yeah. ad-libby, and then I couldn't get <laughs> <do> it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What, what uh, um, there was, a, remember that scene in the first season where it was like all of the, the kids at uh, dinner? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was oh, Ted and Mutt and Ted's Twyla and, and Stevie Ooh, yeah. and Alexis and David. And we were, it was like the last scene before we broke for hiatus and everyone just wanted to get the hell out of there. Like all the crew was like, we need to go. And all of us were like, but we're laughing! <laughs> and we couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. And we were, because we were at a table, like we were making eye contact with everyone at all times. And it was just an absolute, we were eating cold lasagna. Yeah. Which didn't yeah. matter. And the fun thing is that by the end of it, no one's laughing with you. No. Like <laughs> you look out to like camera guys being like, uh, <laughs> uh <Yeah. hi. laughs> Get it done. Yeah. Um, but it becomes it becomes like not funny at a no, point. No, like, I don't even think it was funny to begin with. No, but you get so like racked with you just get uh, like a case of the laughs and you can't yeah. turn them off. Yeah. Like the more uh, tired the crew would get with it, the more we'd laugh. Yeah. Yes. Being at church as a kid laughing yeah. at church. Or something. And the irritating thing was there were like five people at the table and every take it was somebody Someone else. else. Yeah. 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 Who breaks the most? Who broke the most? I sort of built it into my character. Sure, I get it. <laughs> that but, helps. But honestly, yeah. to my defense, <laughs> I did, in the beginning, even before I started breaking and being very unprofessional, I always, when I watched TV, particularly comedies, and people were saying one-liners or jokes and things, I always found it strange that other people weren't amused yeah. by the people doing the lines. Yeah. So part of it was me being amused as a character at the things that were being said, and then it made it very easy to cover yeah. my amusement Smart. as a human on this planet, yeah. finding what was happening very funny. Yeah. And when, in the pilot episode of the series, when Catherine is looking, she's lost her mm. diamond bracelet or something. Earring or something. Earring, yeah, yeah, and you're, yeah. you open a drawer and pull out a light bulb and make a Which sound. Which just happened to be in there. And I, if you rewatch oh, yeah, that yeah. scene, yeah. I am Dan literally just goes, and it was because I physically could not take my hands away from my mouth because I would have laughed. Mm. And we did not have a budget for multiple takes. Mm. So you have to be very thrifty with how you go about covering up your own amusement. We didn't have a budget, apparently, to clean up the set either because I opened the drawer looking for your, and there was a light bulb in there. <laughs> so I pulled it out like, ah, like, what are you doing here? And then, an idea. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh. Ah. Yeah. With no idea. But apparently no budget to clean it up. No. Yeah, scream, or scream, prop scream, people scream, really scream. funny. Let's yeah. see if she can think of something with this. <laughs> Let's give her something to work with. So I believe we have run out of time, which saddens me. But I did want to ask, as a, as a last question, I did want to ask, um, you guys have been doing a lot of events. Uh, you have done a tour of the show. You are respond. I mean, fan, there are a lot of um, fan interactions you guys, do, guys have been doing. I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about why that was an important thing for you. Because 
yes, you need to do stuff to promote the show, but clearly not every show that's trying to promote itself is like, we're going to go on a multi-city tour <laughs> and interact with thousands of people. So I, I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about what that has been like and, and why that was something that was important for you guys to do. For, um, yeah. I, for me, I mean, I, I wanted to do the tour because I was becoming more and more aware of the... Uh, excitement and the enthusiasm and the cheerleading that was happening mm. with fan, fans across North America. And we don't necessarily have the scope to get out there other than to tour. And I feel like most of the success of this show is on the shoulders of our fans. I feel like they found the show when no one was watching, they told their friends, They've championed it. They've watched it multiple times. I'm saying they. Some of you are in the room. Um, it's been an unbelievable ride in terms of an interactivity sort of relationship, interactive relationship with the fan base. Um, and I think when people find something that not a lot of people know about, there's a sense of ownership and pride in the fact that they've found something special. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be such a compliment that it was the least we could do to get out there and meet people and to continue the relationships and continue the conversations and to pull back the curtain and to share those sort of behind the scenes stories because that's what got our show to where it is. Yeah. So if you don't have your relationship, it's why I'm active on social media and why I'm active on Twitter because to me, I owe the success of the show to the people that are on there sharing it and retweeting articles and doing all that stuff. It's, it's such a reciprocative uh, relationship. So yeah, it was a way of promoting the show, it was a way of meeting the fan base, and it was a way of saying thank you, ultimately. And I wanted to do the tour because uh, I just love hearing people scream with joy every time I walk out on stage. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for doing this. This has been lovely. I'm very sorry that we have to end, but thank you to everyone for thank you. having us. Thanks them. for coming uh, out, everybody. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. Watch the show.